Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here, bringing you another lovely math video. And, you know, I've had such a good response for this confidence interval video that I did, like, four years ago. Um, just on, you know, I was trying to get some students prepared for a common exam in an old course that I taught that doesn't exist anymore, that had, like, a, a you know, a short little statistics unit in it. Like, literally, it was, like, three classes we finished it. And there was such a big response for this confidence interval video that I was like, wow, I should really do a a better video so if you haven't watched the first one you might want to there's there's a good example in it uh, but it's you know it's, it's back one of the first videos that I made so uh, I thought I might update it with this video um, and I thought actually that I would make a couple more videos uh, on statistics and share my knowledge of statistics um, the little that I have by the way I don't have a ton of knowledge here but I'll share what I can um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the 95% confidence interval. It seems to be a real popular topic in statistics. And basically, all a confidence interval is, it's just a range of numbers that somewhere in, in that range lies the mean, you know, the population mean or whatever you have. Um, and for specifically for the 95% confidence interval, for any normally distributed set of data, 95% um, of your values are going to lie within two standard deviations of the mean. Um, or really to be exact or close to being exact, you know, would be 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. And depending on what you have, if you have a 90% confidence interval, that number is going to go down. And if you have a 99% confidence interval, that number is going to go um, up because you got more data, so you got a bigger range. Um, so a formula that we've used, my students have used in the past, is one that I have given here. Um, so if you have a sample size that's you know greater than 30, um, greater oh, hate that my Mac always does that. Uh, if you have a sample size that's greater than 30, then you can use this guy down here. Let me get a marker out here. Oh, what's your co favorite color? Uh, blue. So you can use this guy down here. So now the beauty of this formula is really easy to use, and all you need to be able to use it is if you look at this number here, 1.96, so that's 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. This guy right here is your um, mean, your standard deviation, and your sample size. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, again, this is not meant to be a super in-depth video. It's just to give you a, uh, really a general idea of what confidence interval is and a couple of examples of how it's used. Um, I included this. Uh, just in case anyone was looking for it, and that 1.96, I've saw different called different things in different places. Um, but what I saw, how, what was in the textbook that I was looking at before I made this video, was called Z. And a Z is basically that number, and that gives you the range of how far away it is from standard deviation. So 90% of the data would be 1.645 away from the from the from the mean. Or if you're going 99% of the data, it'd be 2.56 standard deviations away from the mean. So uh, depending on you want, all you need to do is switch it that Z. So our question is 96. Switch it that Z. Go ahead, and then you can run these numbers. So let's do a few examples. And this video is gonna be a little bit longer. I got a few examples here, but uh, you know it's meant to help. So all right. So margin of error. So this is another thing I almost forgot about. So a lot of times questions will ask you, what's the margin of error on a something? You, just, you might hear it on CNN. Uh, I've been watching CNN all day today. And um, you might hear it on CNN or one of these news networks and they're talking about politics and polls. Um, and, you know, you know, 95% of the time this poll is correct and with a margin of error of something, something. So this margin of error comes from this calculation of the standard of the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size times your z value of 1.96 for a 95% confidence interval. So that's all the margin of error is, and I call it the mo, in the matter of uh, mo the bartender, right here. So um, that's all you need to know to calculate the mo. You need to know 1.96 times your standard deviation divided by your sample size. Now I'm not going to go into this video on how to calculate standard deviation. That's a um, you know that's a separate issue. I'm just going to go on. If we got a problem where it's asking us to calculate this, and, and we're given this stuff, so um, if you're looking how to calculate that, search YouTube. Maybe I'll make a video someday. Um, but again, that's something that you probably need to know if you're doing a stats course. But most often than not, you're going to use Minitab. Uh, your graphing calculator, TI-83, can do it um, cumbersomely, but it can do it. All right, so here we go. 
So it says the sample is taken and it's determined that the mean of the sample is 45 and uh, the standard deviation is 6.5. Uh, what is the 95% confidence interval if the sample size is 40? So I got the formula over here just so I don't have to uh, pretend like I haven't memorized or anything, right? Um, so again, we got all the parameters that are given to us. It's just a matter of you know plugging it in. So uh, excuse my writing here as I uh, try to get situated here on the couch for my day of watching CNN. Uh, so 95% uh, confidence interval is equal to. So I got all the parameters over here. So that's my mean. So my mean of the sample is 45 x bar. And again, the symbols, guys. I mean, in math, everyone says there's always cons there's always like a consensus or all whatever. That's that's you know I was just about to curse, but you know what I was about to say. There's not. There's like you look in textbooks, anywhere you look, there's different notation. Whatever your prof uses, whatever your teacher uses, you use that because you want to make you want to tell them what they want to hear a lot of times. Um, 1.9, 1.96. I always tell my students, if you know a different way and you like that way, you go ahead and use it. But not everyone's so understanding. Uh, my standard deviation is 6.5, and I divide that by the square root of sample size, so n, 40 in our case. So there you go. So the thing about this, and you probably notice this plus or minus sign. Now, if you've done any type of pre-calc or anything like that, uh, the plus or minus, you've probably seen it in the quadratic formula. All it means is that we have to do this little addition statement for the plus and then do it again for the minus. But before we do that, let's actually work out this right-hand side. And again, we'll just do the mo. And I, got, I can't do that in my head, so I'm just going to use a calculator. So basically, the right-hand side is the mo. So let's... So I'm going to go 6.5 divided by the square root of 40, which is 1.0277 something something something, times 1.96. So that gives me a mo of 2.01. So somewhere in that ballpark, um, you know, uh, whatever your prof requests in terms of number of decimal places. And then what we need to do is, of course, the confidence interval is actually a range. So it's not just one solution. It's two numbers, and somewhere in between there is the actual mean. So, or sorry, is that's where the 95% the of the data lies. Sorry. Um, so let's, all you need to do now is we need two numbers, and sometimes I'll just put it in brackets like that. So I'm going to do 45 point, or 45, subtract 2.01. And that's going to be 42.99, just like that. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to add it. And of course, when I add it, I get 47.01. So there you go. That's my confidence interval. So, you know, according to my formula, 95% um, of my data should be within these two numbers, um, 42.99 and 47.01. All right, so let's do this for another number. So, I mean, no matter how you change the numbers, really all the same. So, but let's just see we can't find a little pattern. Let me just adjust here. Uh, so I got 95% CI is equal to 45 plus or minus 1.96 times 6.5 divided by, so the only thing I'm changing now is the sample size. So of course sample size is just the number of things you use. So if you're doing a survey, you know, in the first one we did 40 people, and in the second one we did 100 people. So you know, what the, what should really happen, of course you should recognize if you're doing a stats course, is the larger your sample size, provided it's an unbiased sample size, um, the more accurate your experiment should be. So let's just calculate the mole here real quick divided by square root of 100. So I get 45 plus or minus. I'm still really trying to get the hang of this. I got a new pen tablet. Really trying to get the hang of this thing. And um, so yeah, so there's my mo. So what you notice is that sample size leads to a lower margin of error. So that kind of makes sense, right? So if you're doing a political poll, I mean, the more people you ask, 
the better representation of the population you're going to actually get, right? So, I mean, as long as it's an unbiased, if you keep asking people who you know represent your views, then that's not going to work. It has to be unbiased. 45 minus um, 1.274. So we get 43.726. So you know that's there's a tighter this time. It's sort of a tighter um, confidence interval. So it's a much smaller. Well, I can say much, but it's a smaller range. So let's do it. The last one, just for the, you know completeness sake. How long is this video so far? Ten minutes. All right. So for completeness sake. Uh, let's do 1,500. So 95%. I still got one example after this, guys. So it's probably going to be close to you know 15 minutes plus by the time we get this video done. Uh, so 45. So if you want to skip ahead, don't skip ahead, please. Watch the whole thing. Um, 6.5 divided by square root of 1,500. So let's speed it up a bit. So I'll do it again. So uh, 1.96 times 6.5 divided by square root of 1,500. And I get really small margin of error. Oh, phone is ringing. Really small margin of error when I... No worries. <laughs> My wife got it, don't worry. Um, so let's see. Um, 45 plus 0 decimal 3289. So I end up with four five decimal three two eight nine and then on the other side I end up with forty five subtract zero decimal three two eight nine and I end up with forty four point six seven one one all right I got one more example to do and then we're gonna be done this thing so you see guys here the margin of error really really small sorry for that interruption um, all right, so here we go. Last example. All right, so it says a random sample of 35 red pine trees, not green pine trees, red pine trees, was selected from a large forest containing uh, 100,000 trees. So, you know, when you look at, a, um, you know, a 100,000 tree forest and you select it 35, that's a really small sample size. Um, the mean diameter of the trees, so we're talking about the distant, the, you know, the size of the trunk, basically. Uh, which 25.3 centimeters, that doesn't seem that big actually, uh, with a standard deviation of 3.6. So let's calculate the 95% the confidence interval. So the 95% CI is equal to 25.3 plus or minus. Um, so what do we have? I've already forgotten the formula. 1.96 uh, 3.6 3.6 divided by square root of 35. So we do have enough sample size there. Remember, I just need a 30, uh, 30 plus. So, all right, let's calculate the margin of error. So 1.96 times 3.6 divided by square root of 35. So I got a small margin of error there, not that big actually. 2.3 plus or minus 1.19. So then um, we end up with 25.2, subtract 1.19, so 24.01 on the low end. On the top end, we end at 25.2 plus 1.19, and I end up with 26.39.39. So there's my confidence interval. So um, what that means in terms of the... Uh, situation that we have here is that according to the data 95% of the dia the trees in that forest will have a diameter between 24.01 and 26.39 um, so that's really what we can say now the qu question B these questions I always kind of find kind of silly can you make any conclusions with the population of tr all trees in Canada um, mm, I would say no the sample size is way too small if we had a massive sample size of trees from many forests throughout Canada, then we can have, but we just picked one forest that contained a thousand trees. 
there's lots of forests in Canada, so we'd have to have more, um, you know, a vast sample size and a much and a better selecting method than just I. I mean, 35 trees is just not enough. We need way more, and we need not only from one forest, we need from many forests. So guys, again, I hope this helps. I love the response to my first video. Hopefully this does just as well. If you haven't watched the first video, you might want to. Again, please subscribe. If stats are what you guys want, then I will certainly give you more videos. Best of luck. I'll see some of you in class. Talk to you later.